to you all. Really good. I trust that the Lord will bless each one of us this evening. Shall we just open in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you that we are able to meet together in the church where we can see each other in the flesh, Lord, and we thank you and praise you uh, that it's worked out okay in recent weeks. Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will lead us in the service this evening. We pray that everyone that comes online and everyone that's in this meeting right now, we pray that you will bless them. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The band are going to lead us in a time of worship. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Shall we stand as we sing Light of the World? Thank you. <laughs>
Isn't it good to worship our God? It's, it's good to see some newcomers today. For a while. I hope you're well. Can I have the notices, Gary? <coughs> Tuesday, 7 o'clock, there's a regional leaders meeting followed by a <coughs> local leadership meeting on Zoom in person. Wednesday, 6 o'clock or 6.15 is our online prayer and share and that's via Zoom. Thursday, 6.45 for 7 is our online growth group, again via Zoom. Next Sunday, 11 o'clock, Destiny Church online, morning service with Pastor Andrew Owen. You can get that on YouTube or on the <coughs> Destiny page or on Facebook. 6 o'clock next Sunday, church service here at Church on the Rise from Forest, followed by refreshments. It's good. To have a notice board up again. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to realize that there's things going on throughout the week. Yeah. 
<coughs> it's good to give us things to thank God for. And is there a prayer? Let's go. Thank you. We'll ask to pray for Kerry and Steve, for Rodica, for Christy and Emmanuel and family and churches in Wafaru and Hamalgai, for Rob and Kat, for Anwen and for Favour. <coughs> I'm going to leave that open. If anyone would like to come and pray for one or two of those items, come forward. please come forward and pray from here. Father, we thank you and pray for, you <coughs> for everything we have known. I'm amazed, Father, I can stand here and talk to the God who created heaven and earth and the sea and everything in it. Father, I was looking at the Bible the other day and he said, Come to me, you only me at heavy and heavy, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is just light. What a sort of God we are, Father, we can approach. We look at the sick in the church now, Father, people lost loved ones. We do pray for them, Father, pray for Kelly and Steve, Father, and, and Rob and Kath, Father. I mean, and many others lost their way, Father. Mm. And we just pray, Father, that you will touch them in a way, Father, and bring them back to us, Father. And I pray for everybody watching, Father, if there's any other or lost of ones, and you'll come for them. So I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Marvin. Is there anyone else that would like to pray at this moment? No? Heavenly Father, we do thank you and we do praise you that you are a God who answers prayers. And Father, I pray that you will answer our prayers today. We lift up Steve and Kerry Gillard mm. and we pray that they might find comfort through you, the God of all comfort. We pray for Roddy for Christy and Emmanuel and family and the churches in Waparil and Hamagai. We pray, Lord, that you will bring comfort to those to lose their pastor. Lord, it's a disaster for them. But we know, Lord, that you will carry them through and that you will bring along someone else to lead them. And Father, we pray for Rob and Kath Father, we pray that you will give them that comfort that they, they are seeking after losing God's mother. Lord, we just pray that you will put your arms around them and that you will give them that comfort and that assurance that you will carry them through. And we pray for Anwen, Lord, and we pray that you will continue to strengthen her, yeah. her eyes, and we thank you for what you've done thus far, Lord, and that's yeah. a miracle in itself. Yeah. And Lord, we just pray that you will <coughs> carry her through, Lord, and the next operation that will be coming probably six weeks' time, we just pray that you will be there for that, Lord. We know that you will. And Father, we pray for favour. Just about everyone in our church know about favour and know favour from online. And Lord, we pray that your healing hands will be upon her. She's had a difficult time in the hospital and it's cost a fortune. And there's no, no one out there in her country to pay. So Father, we pray that you will touch that body. We pray, Lord, that you won't need to see a doctor. We pray that you will, will bless her. Oh Lord, the balm of Gilead. 
upon her. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good to see you, Catherine. I'm going to ask Sarah if she'll come to read the, the reading now. <coughs> the reading tonight is from Psalm 20. I was going to say it's one of my favourite psalms, but I say that every time, so I do love the psalms. It's Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and will lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. O Lord, save the King. Answer us when we call. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Before I ask Gareth to come, I, I would like us to pray for him. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we lift up Gareth as he comes uh, to speak to us from this pulpit now, Lord. And we pray that your blessing will be upon him. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will motivate him. And we pray, Lord, that you will give him the words to say. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that every one of us will receive a blessing, including God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Gary. I knew Sue was going to say about favourite songs. There's 150 out there and about 147 of them are your favourite. <laughs> yeah. So, we had that reading and a little bit later on I'm going to refer to one verse in particular. I don't know how many of you watched the rugby yesterday, but I wouldn't get it, thank you Wayne. But at least we watched it. And uh, I was thinking about the first time I went to see a rugby match in Cardiff Arms Park as it was then and the dreadful thought that I came up with was that it was over 60 years ago when I first went to watch a rugby match and how different it was the team were all amateurs you know they'd come up from the pit and had a wash some of them and they went straight on the field and then some were having to go back to work or in to work completely different but yesterday, what struck me most of all was the singing, or the lack of it. And I was comparing the match that I went to in 60 years ago with the match I watched yesterday. And I think that the only song they sang any bits of at all, apart from the anthems, was Hymns and Arias by Max Boyce. Do you know, when I went there, it was like being in a church congregation of 72,000 people. Because the only singing, with one exception, which was Sospen Bach, that's the new way somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Apart from Sospen Bach, they were all Welsh hymns. Many of them in Welsh. And I was thinking about the atmosphere. Really, it was like being in church, like being in a big church. Like being in a Billy Graham crusade, you know, and how things have changed and how the songs have changed and how singing has changed. And one song in particular that, that we used to uh, sing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, <coughs> pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, 
but thou art mighty, hold me with thy powerful hand. And I was thinking, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. God is there always with us, guiding us, you know. And the thought of having God to guide us is incredible. The God who made this earth, who sent his son to die for us, is actually concerned about Gareth Jones. He's actually concerned about Phil Morris and we could name the rest of you. And he's interested because he wants to guide us. He has a path for us. He has things for us to do, places for us to go. And I think it would be great if, uh, if I remember to sing that more often and to ask for his guidance. Because sometimes things happen and, and I think I know what the answer is. I know the best way to go. Whereas actually, I should be praying, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Well, I was thinking about guiding and, you know, you've heard me share lots of things about Romania in the past, but one of the important tasks for the driver of the front vehicle was to be aware of the people that were in the convoy and to drive safely and to be their guide. And, you know, that we would sit in the front vehicle and you'd check there was enough room to pull out, that when you did pull out, there was enough room for the other three or the other four. And for the whole of the journey, we were concerned about the people behind us and concerned about being the guide that they needed. And I remember the first one, I said the first time, the first time we drove to Italy, Sue and I, she had a map and she must have turned over about seven pages between here and Rome. And I depended on her to guide me. And it was okay. <laughs> it was. Should I say it was really good that you were marvellous with that map, except for the one upside down thing. But I mean, you've got to face things like that, aren't you? You know, that just happens. The guide, she was my guide in that sense, that without her, I wouldn't have known which roundabout, because we're talking pre-Satnav and this lady that spoke to you, you know, we didn't have any of that. The only lady that spoke to me was you. You could have been the first Satnav voice if we thought of it, couldn't you? Yeah. We'd have made a couple of them then. But you know, guidance and people guiding us. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. We couldn't have coped without God's guidance. I couldn't have coped without God's guidance or without God's presence. You know, there are times that come along when we struggle, but it's our faith in God, our faith and our trust in our guide that makes the difference to our lives. Do you know, if we're not very careful, can I tell him a story about your dad, Rob? Yeah. Four vehicles, remember that one? four vehicles on a trip to Romania and the idea was the driver, the front vehicle who was doing the guiding was responsible for not only the overtaking but also deciding where to stop to pick up fuel or to have something to eat or just for a toilet break and so whenever we stop keep your eyes on the vehicle in front otherwise you don't know where you're going to end up what do your father do? talking to David Martin straight past the exit. So there's three of us in the services, panicking, now we're about to get in. And the, and the trouble was, the van wasn't ours, it was a brand new one. So actually, I think some people were more worried about the van and about your dad. But, uh, and that's what happens. You know, sometimes we take our eyes off our guide. Sometimes we take our, our eyes off the, the leader. I mean, it turned out well. The, we were sat there for about three hours, and eventually the uh, the German, whatever they call themselves, police, found us and said, "Have you lost anything?" <laughs> and we were tempted to say no, <laughs> but, uh, but we had. And they told us exactly where he was. They told Gethin to to stay put, that we would catch up with them, and and everything went well. It's important that we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. It's important that we keep our eyes on our guide. You know the verse that, uh, that Sue read, 
some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. Us, those of us who love Jesus, the second of those two verses says, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. And it's what keeps us going, and it's what makes a difference, and it's what encourages us, and hopefully it's what gives, helps us to give encouragement to other people as well. Whatever we do, God is always there to guide us. Sometimes we think he's left us, he's not here anymore because we're struggling. And actually, the Bible says he never leaves us or forsakes us. And the, the, the kind of Bible reference that I just want to share is something that everybody is familiar with. In the Old Testament, the children of Israel had been told by God to go in and occupy the land of Canaan. Go in, everything is ready. And we know that the story says they didn't really trust. And they wanted to send spies in, and they did. They sent 12 in. 10 came back saying, I wouldn't go in there for all of the in China. I don't suppose they said that, but that's the kind of gist of it. I wouldn't go in there. Too many tall men, too many big men, too many well-armed soldiers. And then two came along and said, uh, well, what you've said is true, but we don't trust in chariots, we don't trust in horses, we trust in God. God said, we should get up and do. But of course they were outnumbered. And we know that the story says that God stopped them going in and for 40 years they walked in circles in the desert. But you know God was still their guide. We're told that by day there was a pillar of cloud in front that they followed. And by night there was a pillar of fire that kept them safe, that protected them. Whatever we do, however we let God down, however we disobey what God says, He never leaves us. God is still our guide. God's still there to, to help us. If we trust in God to be our guide, He will, and I've underlined the word, always be with us. Doesn't pick and choose, doesn't say, I sure that I think that one was a bit bad, I can't really go back when but it never happens. God is always there. God will always be our guide. Even though we often let him down. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. And you know, whenever I sing that, and I love singing, I really, really, really love singing, and I'm just hoping that when we get up there, that there'll be a choir. I seriously, I you know, I really to be in an atmosphere like that is incredible. I remember being part of a a group of people that went from this church, many of them young people, to Bristol to a Billy Graham crusade. Remember that one? Twenty two thousand people. Yeah, I think it was Ashton Gate Stadium in Bristol. Incredible. And even in school, there are people who would debate it, but I had the best music teacher that the world ever produced, Herbie Martin, fantastic. And sing, he would teach us songs that nobody ever believed kids could sing. We sang Bach's Christmas Oratorio. Let me ask you, I can see your face going forward, but it's absolutely true. <laughs> we sang Bach's Christmas Oratorio. What I didn't tell you was that one of the teachers was a member of the Bach choir <laughs> and he did most of the singing we kind of did the backup but it was there uh, to be a grammar school choir and then his name spoiled it to say that we'd sung it and you know i love it i really really love it and the thought of being in heaven singing those songs i can sing some welsh hymns i don't know that they're actually in welsh it's just words I picked up from the people around me when we were playing rugby. So I dare not sing them in church for obvious reasons. <laughs> but, you know, it's an incredible situation to be in. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. So, I finish with, let this be our prayer. 
if we haven't trusted in God to guide us, if we haven't dedicated our lives to him, remember, he's always there, he's always with us. And at the end of this uh, video, there'll be some information that will help you if you've not made that decision. If you've not decided to put your faith and trust in God, if you've not decided to choose God as your guide, then tonight might be the time to do it. God bless you. Yes. Thank you, Gareth. Guide me all the <laughs> time. But we should sing at the finish, shouldn't we, after that? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Gareth. <clears throat> sure, but our prayers are answered. Absolutely positive. Mm -hmm. We're going to ask the band to lead us again in a time of praise and worship. <coughs>
Thank you, Mind. Thank you. Father, we thank you and we praise you that you are the God who's answered <coughs> our prayers this Amen. evening. Thank we thank you, Lord, that you are the God who guides us over every troublesome situation. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you are our God and we are your children. And as we go our separate ways, we pray that you will come with us. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Amen.